invite our the speaker, Dr. Chen Xiaodong, to have a presentation. So before we start this um, great presentation, I would like to introduce a little bit of Chinese Institute of Engineers, San Francisco chapter of history. CIE actually was established hundred more than hundred years ago, believe it or not, by Mr. Zhang Tianyu and then Lin Hongxun. And actually, we just celebrate the hundredth anniversary in Bay Area in 2017. As you may know, there are six chapters in United States for CIE. For the CIE San Francisco chapter Bay Area was established actually more than 40 years ago, and we just celebrate 40th anniversary in 2090. So we come to ask ourselves, how amazing for this organization? Why we have so many chapters? Because the purpose of CIE is to promote engineering and the scientific excellence. And the fun part for this organization is that we're going to have organized lots of the networking activities. The purpose is to grow networking, to grow the community, also to have a chance to have people to meet up, to build up the relationship. So you can see that we have lots of the, the um, hiking or bowling events, even for the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, dinner lunch prior to the COVID-19. And as you may know that uh, after two years of COVID-19 uh, social uh, shutdown, we decided to have a face-to-face -face, uh, meetup in our annual conference on May 14, which I'm going to introduce a little bit later. But the point is, I just cannot wait to introduce this opportunity for us to see face-to-face -face again. So it's a good chance to follow up lots of our events in our newsletter. So please have a chance to scan this code QR code in the Facebook, LinkedIn, or even newsletter on screen. But the last but not least that I have to thank a lot for our sponsors, individuals and the corporation that with lots of continuous sponsoring so that we can have so much uh, amazing programs being designed, including like today. So maybe you was wondering that what we are trying to do today, inside the CIE, we have a multiple groups. Today's event was hosted by ECTS group. In this group, actually, we have our own mission. Our mission is to build up the ECTS community together. And we designed three different programs. The first, is coding study group. The second is a technical series talk, like today. And third one is the leadership lecture. So for the first one, coding study group is the program we have designed for those software engineers, data scientists, who want to look for a job in Bay Area. We just have a design this weekly meeting every Saturday, 10 to 11 AM, right now in a Zoom meeting. This is the program where people get together to have a chance to learn the interview <clears throat> skill and also discuss the very detailed or even more technical software pro program, uh, how to improve the program skill. And we have lots of sharing in this program that people got a job, come back to us to share how they get a job in a software programmer position. And this one, leadership lecture, is a very special one. This program is invited only because we found that we want to appreciate the volunteers who want to contribute their time to support this community. We designed this program only for the people who want to join us to serve the community. We invite a special speaker to provide like close virtual face-to-face -face conversation to really answer your personal career development question. We even have the speaker to share their thought for you. Instead of like just a, a webinar we provide today, this program is invited only because we really want to grow each dedicated volunteer better. Then this is 
the annual conference, we want we specifically want to promote uh, for this year because this is going to be the first time after um, COVID nineteen, we have a chance to have a face to face meeting uh, to promote this CIE com community. So the date will be on May fourteenth at Santa Clara Convention Center. It's a very good chance to have. Uh, this good opportunity, people get together to have a face-to-face -face conversation, build a network. In the afternoon session, we have a series of a great talk uh, for the engineering presentation. At night, we have a banquet for the invited person only. So we sincerely invite all of you guys who really want to understand what CIE is trying to do to try to serve the community, come to our afternoon session. Also, if you really want to help us, you really want to get us uh, growing together opportunity. Please join us volunteer. So we're gonna have a chance to uh, like a QR code survey in the end of this pro um, this today's call. Please come to the survey to um, fill up uh, your feedback about this event. Also, uh, just give a chance to see this program. If you like, please sign up to be our uh, volunteer. We really like people to uh, help to each other to grow this community better. So let me have this honor to introduce the a speaker today, Dr. Xiao Dong Chen. <clears throat> Dr. Chen is the CTO of Hard Drive Business Unit in Western Digital. Today we have this honor to invite uh, Dr. Xiao Dong Chen to present this topic, data storage innovations for the data by age. So please, if you have any questions, you just feel free to go to the chat board next to the YouTube live stream. Just have your uh, questions. We're going to have a chance to share the story or sh uh, share this question uh, to Dr. Chen. Uh, then we would love to share his thought to you. So let's welcome Dr. Xiaodong Chen. Thank you. CIE community, uh, San Francisco chapter. Uh, very honored. Uh, Wilson introduced the history of this. I, I feel uh, this is such a prestigious, prestigious group. Uh, really have a, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to present the, uh, the data storage industry and technology with the community. Uh, as Wilson mentioned, the the goal of this community to, is to create the interaction, to grow the community. Uh, also, from the age, from our data storage side, given this is in Bay Area, this is a small community also, we hope to connect with CIE and grow our uh, awareness too. Um, I'd like to thank all the people on the line for spending the time uh, with us. I know this is uh, uh, every evening you probably will be uh, is already very tired and uh, all this dedication uh, is such a, a wonderful thing for us. Uh, I really appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we can have some uh, good dialogue together. Um, from the data storage point of view, uh, we are very excited in the current 
uh, digital transformation, the whole society in the last 20 years went through web 1.0 to 2.0. Now, currently we're entering an era is a web 3.0. And that really transformed our life, the, the way we, the, the whole world in our society. When we look at that and, and just rewind the two, uh, 20 years ago to now, it is totally different. One layer underneath, then we talk about technology and we see is the cloud is, is really established. And uh, also AI machine learning is really powering the whole, uh, uh, the, uh, the thinking of the cloud. And also created this cryptocurrency, the metaverse, all these new things generated on the, uh, from the technology front. The, the, the data created on edge, then moved to the cloud. All these are growing in a very, very fast pace. Um, people mostly talking about computation. They talk about CPU, they talk about GPU. All the company like AMD and uh, all these companies working on this new computation companies really got the attention and the people know what exact how exciting this uh, new innovation world, uh, is. But on the technology storage front, which is also going through lots of innovation uh, uh, transformation and. Unfortunately, this exciting field hasn't been fully understood by the, the big audience. And uh, as we look forward uh, with more data uh, need to be in, uh, stored. And uh, we talk about zeta byte, uh, which is 10 to the 21 uh, order of the bytes. And uh, that a tremendous amount of uh, storage requirement. The technology underneath is going through a very, very fundamental change. And I hope to take the next uh, um, uh, the uh, hour or so sharing this excitement. And uh, hopefully, I can create some awareness of our industry and create some excitement and also create some connection when uh, to the work you are currently doing. I look at storage is really unique. Uh, part of the reason I look at storage is really, you look at this is, it is a time traveler vehicle. You have information, storage is the only thing allow you to keep this and the travel with time. So if, if, if we talk about storage, I always want to use this as a more kind of exciting term, it's a time traveler of the bit. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, as Wilson, uh, Wilson said, um, actually my last name is very uh, not very common in Chinese, uh, uh, C-H-E. Uh, in Chinese, it's a ch, 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 ch. So uh, it is definitely, I think, a Korean probably, uh, my last name uh, with ch is probably more popular than uh, Chinese. Uh, but I happen to be, uh, that's my last name. Uh, I came from uh, not North side of China, I actually come from Shanghai. Uh, I came to United States in uh, 1987. Uh, actually, I met the so-called magnetic recording, that's the uh, uh, data uh, recording media, in 1990 when I was a PhD student. I remember vividly, uh, we have a, every Thursday a, a so-called the uh, social seminar uh, event. So four o'clock, then you have you 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 go, you you went to a second floor. Uh, it's a physics department, so you social with the professor. Then you you have a you have a lecture at a five o'clock. Then for the Q and A, it's kind of, it's kind of wonderful event. It's always the thing I uh, look forward every week. And and I remember one uh, one week, the topic is. Um, Man magnetic recording, which is very different from the kind of a classic physics view of uh, uh, domain. So the professor from WE, uh, Professor Neil Bertrand, and he he's uh, one of the big uh, 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 role in the 
is uh, in this field. Uh, he he wrote a book on magnetic recording. Uh, the topic is about me, so-called media noise. Uh, I don't know how many people uh, at the age uh, you uh, when play the so-called magnetic tape. When you look at the audio or video, when you when you hear the audio high pitch, there's always a kind of background noise. So the study is all about what is the mechanism of the noise and how we can uh, uh, reduce that. And it, the professor introduced a magnetic computation model and the, to explain to so-called magnetic particle cluster. And this cluster, which can be uh, used to explain certain frequency spectrum of the noise. And finally, this is very fascinating because all this I can really connect what uh, this study to what the real application is. So as a, my, uh, my background is a physics, actually a theoretical physics. So to a certain extent, uh, it, it, I found that this kind of study to a certain extent uh, gave me another uh, excitement in terms of some of the understanding I can really help to change the world. So after the professor uh, presentation, I, I did some kind of uh, uh, calculation. So I built an analytical model uh, during the, after the weekend, I shared to him and he said, oh, this is something interesting. And, uh, and he asked me if I'm interested to uh, work for him after I graduate, uh, got my PhD. Uh, so one year after that, 1991, I uh, uh, got my PhD then, uh, he already have a job for me over there. So to a certain extent, I entered that field is a really a, a lucky kind of coincidence. And to a certain extent, um, it, I didn't realize uh, this is really uh, started my career and almost now more than 30 years. Um, in, the, uh, in the Professor Neil Bertrand's lab, I was able to have lots of freedom to work on different fields. Uh, there was lots of visitors from uh, IBM, uh, which at that time IBM is the, basically the uh, the center of the, the hard drive uh, technology innovation. So get got learned so fast, and uh, when I have a one year uh, grad uh, after the postdoc, uh, I came to Bay Area and start to my work. Uh, my field, technical field, is basically on magnetic, uh, magnetic uh, device design and also signal processing. And with these uh, two fields, I, I can really uh, grow the, my influence and contribution to this industry very fast. Uh, within five years, um, uh, I was one of the uh, uh, probably the, the technical leaders in the, in the field. Um, in, the picture here I shared is a, is the one uh, is a, the annual meeting called Lake Arrowhead Conference, and this is the meeting is a uh, uh, invited only, and we have uh, uh, some all the key industry leader coming together talking about what the future uh, of uh, our data storage will be. Uh, I was the one of the one in the middle with the green uh, dark green kind of uh, sweater. Um, the one behind me, uh, he he is uh, Dr. Kreider. Uh, he is a CTO of Seagate, um, and he was the one named after the famous uh, area density growth, just like the Moore's law for semiconductor. Uh, he was uh, his name was uh, a name. Uh, he is named after this uh, uh, our recording magnetic recording data growth density curve, which is uh, uh, people now you call that the. Uh, uh, Dr. Kreider's uh, law. Um, next to me, there is a, a Chinese in, uh, per, uh, engineer with a wear glass, and he his name is Ching Chen. Uh, he actually uh, was just received a IBM fellow. Um, he uh, that year he uh, published a paper demonstrated that there's a, a demonstrated one gigabit per square inch, which is ten times what the at that time, the, the product uh, delivered area density. So that was a very exciting moment. I was so happy to be working with all the, the, the industry leader together. 
and it was a really enjoyable moment. Uh, also very uh, exciting for me is uh, in 1995, I was uh, working with a couple of key Chinese uh, leaders uh, in this industry, uh, formed a, a Chin Chinese American Information Storage uh, Society, so CAISS. And uh, currently this society has uh, more than 1,000 people and still very active uh, to support the HDD and the magnetic recording and now expanded to SSD world. Uh, it's a great community. I hope we can connect with uh, CIE together and uh, push that in the future. So all these things didn't really, uh, as we, as my career goes uh, in Bay Area, uh, definitely the, the, the curve is not always growing. And uh, in 2000, uh, dot com bust, uh, bubble busted. Uh, definitely, all the uh, high tech company, including uh, our HDD side, uh, went through this uh, very um, struggling uh, period of time. Uh, in 2003, the company I worked at, uh, Rewrite, uh, went bankrupt. So it's almost uh, it's a bottom of my career uh, at that time. So to a certain extent, now I look back, I really see that was a very, very important moment for me to kind of transform myself from purely a, a technology person to a more focus on how do we, how do I really drive to make the, our team successful, make the, uh, the group successful, so really expand my scope uh, as I went through that process. Uh, I joined the, the company after that, after this uh, rewrite uh, bankrupt, I joined the uh, IBM, count, IBM division and then uh, uh, it was then uh, bought by Hitachi, the company called HTST. Uh, in, that, uh, in that many years, uh, I had a very, very uh, enjoyable growth, uh, not only on the technical side and also helping the uh, U.S. team, Japan team, and really become a worldwide successful technology innovation group. Um, in 2011, uh, this is a one of the test moments for us. Uh, I was in Japan. Actually, I left uh, Japan that night and then uh, landed in U.S. and found out that there, is, there was a big earthquake in Japan. Uh, March 11, I heard that. I remember that day very clearly. And uh, this is really, I think, uh, gave me uh, a, 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 a kind of a, a personal connection to the people I worked in Japan. And I helped them to uh, go walk through this hard time personally. I really start to understand uh, how um, each one, as we look at this word, uh, we talk about work, we talk about um, the uh, innovation, but the most important thing is the, uh, as we deal with all these things, the fundamental thing is that there will be some unpredictable things in our life. And uh, it's, it, it's all the community help us to uh, work together to overcome that. Um, so another Last milestone as I look at my career, I have to uh, put the uh, uh, most recently, since I have uh, my, my kind of hobby is a, uh, is a, is a plane called the uh, Wei Qi, right? I saw the AlphaGo beat the uh, uh, Li Shandou. Um, this is really an eye-opening event. Uh, what I really start to see is there's certain things I think there's the digital world, uh, which is basically uh, which cannot replace human intelligence. And after this event, I start to have a different view. I start to see is the digital revolution will grow and there will be no boundary of, uh, to exceed the human intelligence or even go beyond that. And this is, I start to re re realize how important our digital storage, the data storage will be because most of the future growth will depend on the data. And uh, uh, what we are doing is really to keep this data. And uh, this is the core of all the 
is the future AI and all this technology is built upon. So uh, my company always want me to share this to, uh, to the audience as I talk about some of the uh, technology. But in general, I think that in this, uh, for this uh, material, most of the things uh, is really, uh, um, I would say, the, uh, the kind of a, uh, very generic. But uh, if there is something specific, uh, you know, please uh, make sure, uh, you know, some of the things you can come and uh, correct me if uh, the, the, what I present here is not really uh, 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 accurate. But this page protect me from uh, expose myself or expose our company. Zettabyte is a very exciting number. I, I always said the two big numbers I res respect a lot. Uh, one is the Z Zeta, that's a 10 to the 21. The other is the more, which is basically number of the molecules we basically form a kind of a ma uh, microscope of, of a physical property. Uh, when the data at that kind of a size, people try to imagine how big the data is. So. I went to some Google and uh, tried, tried to check it out. There's a couple of very interesting kind of uh, uh, lines there. And one is on Cisco uh, blog. What I found which was interesting because is uh, we are Chinese community. We all know the Great War, how, how big it is and all this, uh, how grand it is. Um, this is one of the examples they try to connect the, the how uh, the size of the zeta byte is like. If you put a one gig byte is a, like the size of a brick, you basically uh, you basically really uh, have a 258. You build a 258 great wars in China. Uh, that's really amazing. Uh, also, uh, ex former Google CEO Eric Schmidt uh, put it a, a different way of looking. It basically how fast the the data grow. What he said is, uh, you know, from the history, you know, you start to have the data to 2003, uh, there's total about five uh, exabytes generated. But then the growth is so big. And uh, in 2013, right, there's about one zettabyte generated. This is how, how fast the data start to grow. Not every bit of the data generated is saved, but as this thing goes uh, stronger, the more bigger, bigger portion of the data will require uh, to be stored. The, the thing I look at the Zeta, uh, era, Zeta byte era, um, from, our tech, from our industry point of view, this year, we will reach a very, very exciting milestone. Uh, adding CA, US, and Toshiba, we will generate the data uh, storage cap uh, capacity equal to one zettabyte. And then beyond that, I think in the future, like every year we will, uh, we will exceed the one zettabyte and uh, will grow probably uh, 20 to 30% uh, more capacity for the society to be able to store the data. So the, uh, like Einstein said, the uh, ACE, a uh, window of the world is the compound growth, right? So this is this is really really uh, exciting as we look forward. So we look our data storage as this is the backbone of our uh, IT infrastructure. It, it started in nineteen fifty six. That's where the modern data storage device is invented at IBM. It, the device is called the RAMEC. Uh, this uh, machine uh, at that time sold for ten thousand uh, dollar. It's kind of a pre-inflation kind, uh, kind of money, and uh, uh, this was uh, this was a uh, the size of the the device. It probably is uh, uh, much bigger than our washing machine, as you can see there. Uh, if you if you go to Computer History Museum, you will see one if one uh, mo real model actually still working. Uh, it's very exciting. Some of the IBM uh, 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 people, they after they retire, actually they they help the Computer uh, History Museum maintain that machine and be able to write read. 
and uh, this machine is so so important for the for the for the data storage. Uh, the the site I'm working at is a uh, uh, ex IBM site. Next next to the our site there is a park, uh, named after this machine is called the Ramek Park. So in the sixty years, the fifty megabyte this ceramic machine. Uh, equal size of the uh, the device now can store five petabyte. Uh, that is one billion times increase of the capacity. And uh, all this technology drive that the speed of this compound growth for data storage actually equal or even faster than the Moore's law for the semiconductor. So as we look forward, the data actually grows even stronger. As I explained, is uh, the AI machine learning is all built on. We have tremendous uh, uh, amount of raw data for machine to be trained, the algorithm to be up adapted. Then we also start to see a new set of the data in the horizon: the blockchain, cryptocurrency. I don't know how uh, people heard a company called Chia, C H I A, uh, Chia. That's a crypt, uh, cryptocurrency. They are they are they are working on a, a new set of uh, uh, cryptocurrency based on the uh, so called proof of space and time. Uh, instead of doing computation, and they use a data storage space to prove. Uh, the mining or the farming uh, efforts, and uh, so to certain uh, so so that they basically need a lot of hard drive to uh, for the users to um, to uh, save this kind of uh, uh, the data the plot they call it, to prove they have they have efforts on dedicated space dedicated time uh, so that they can get the uh, uh, crypto uh, coins. So this is definitely a new set of data. Actually, at one point, the the the, the, the demand of hard drive is, is suddenly picked up in uh, in China. It 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 really caused a shortage there. Um, also, we we know the sensor data coming from automobile and and all these new devices really uh really growing fast. And uh, smart video, uh, all the monitoring, uh, it's, it's really become a, a norm in the modern society. And the future of Internet of Things, every new dimension of innovation create, will create a new set of uh, uh, big data, uh, data uh, for the storage demand. So currently we see is in the next five years up to 2025, there's a four x of the data will be generated. Uh, definitely, our data storage try to capture all these capacity, but um, in reality, is only four percent of the data generated is actually saved. Uh, most of the other data probably is really captured and then just uh, not able to store. Um, so there is a tremendous potential if we are able to grow our data storage um, innovation will have a more data can be so can be stored and uh, uh, I think a lot of variable uh, lots of new new business model could be established given we have you know bigger portion of data a uh, bigger portion of the data can be saved so As we look in the, the growth of the data storage, um, currently we see there is a basically two dominant solution for data storage. Uh, one is SSD, the other is HDD, hard drive, uh, SSD, solid state uh, um, drive. Uh, in Western Digital, we actually have both Technology, so we have this uh, uh, NAND media as to to develop SSD, and then we also have HDD. So I don't want to be biased one or the other. I really 
see is in the future, we this both storage solution will grow, will continue to grow, and eventually create a two tier of the storage in the cloud, uh, allow us to maximize the uh, total uh, capacity and also the most economy, economical solution for the future. I quickly highlight what is the, the main storage, uh, how they scale the capacity, and then, uh, then explain the HDD also. So for NAN, this is really a semiconductor process. What, if you kind of uh, take the uh, SSD, current SSD, you cut the, uh, uh, the chip, and, and you, you, you can see is, it, it, it is really like a, a multi, like a skyscape type of uh, structure. So every floor, you have a multiple cells, and then you have, then you kind of use them higher, higher uh, levels to to improve the density of the of the data it can save on the on the on the unit kind of a whole service of the wafer. Um, the leading edge right now, people already stack more than hundred uh, uh, cells in the uh, on the wafer. Um, the technology is already try to uh, cover. 200 levels and uh, uh, it's just a keep on building. So to a certain extent that the whole uh, game for name is how do we drive more levels as we uh, put uh, to, to drive the density and uh, to improve the economy. And this is zoom in of the, uh, of the final structure. It's really piece of the art, all these scale up super super small now the other the other thing the ssd people is doing is for each cell it's almost you can see imagine this cell is is a bucket and inside this bucket people putting electrons to 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 uh to be the kind of a counter of a zero one um the, uh, as we increase the number of the uh, layers, as I previously shared, uh, in each of the cell, people start to uh, create a multiple bit in each of the cells. So instead of say, I have an empty uh, bag or I have a bag full of uh, electron, the, uh, the, the technology now involved is instead of you create an empty bag, but you also have like a one quarter of a four electron and half four of electron and three quarter four of electron. This allows us to put the two bit in one cell, right? That's the top curve. And once you have that, then tech engineering uh, efforts will say, why don't we put the even uh, more layers, uh, get, get the three bit into one cell and keep it further as we go. So, so all these technology innovation really introduce another dimension of uh, complexity, uh, make SOC to control this right read and uh, uh, more complicated. And also how to, how to manage the lifetime of each cell. All of these are really the current focus of uh, SSD work. For for the HDD side, uh, the, the the innovation is, is very different. Uh, the HDD efforts is really about how do we continue scale the. Uh, the bit on the, the, the disk. HDD, if you open the drive, open the or current HDD, you will see most, the overall structure is very similar to even 20 years ago. But the, the, the difference is really on the density on, uh, of the disk in terms of how many bit we can put on the disk. And this is the chart we, uh, we shared in the last 60 years. The, the how the area density we call the the one square inch how many bit you can store on the disk surface 
And this famous Crider law, uh, as you can see, really indicating how fast we grow these uh, uh, area density. And also highlighted some of the new technology we introduced uh, in the, uh, to enhance this in, uh, area density growth. Uh, so very, very exciting. Uh, we are now entered the 2020s. Uh, the key technology we are working on is we call the MAMR and the HAMR. Uh, I will explain this uh, uh, a little bit more in the, uh, uh, later. But, uh, but the fundamentally, as we look at this current uh, zeta by era is um, the general rule, general uh, trend is the physical growth will slow down uh, because we really talking about uh, there is there is basically very limited new physics uh, you can uncover. So so to certain extent, we need to work on not only just the physical innovation, we also need to look on some new concept. Uh, here, we, I, I use a concept called SMR, and that is basically a new way of align the data track, track on the disk. And this SMR structure allows us to gain additional 20% of capacity, uh, which is tremendous for current uh, economy. So this is probably the only technical page I want to uh, I want to apologize to the audience and this probably a little bit too deep, uh, but I want to uh, show this to the uh, to 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 you is uh, in case in the future you see the similar kind of a terminology of the, the graph, uh, at least you have uh, some connection. Uh, probably what is the background, uh, why this is. Uh, uh, the important topic for the for the data storage. Uh, so the name of the game right now is uh, we call energy assist. In the history of last fifty years, uh, what basically we uh, a magnetic recording is uh, is very simple. You have a disk. The disk uh, on the disk is a is a magnetic material, and then you have a head. We call it. It's almost like you have a pencil. You you kind of setting the magnetic. Uh, at each each region, either up or down, so that they represent the zero or one on the disk. So it's a very very uh, simple approach for 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 the uh, in 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 this mechanism. Um, on the left, this uh, first chart I showed is you can see here is an illustration of uh, if you zoom in the disk. You can you can see the disk actually the magnetic particle is uh, is like a small grain which is the gray dots there. The size of this grain is about ten nanometers, so very very small. So we put a we put a, a a region of a cluster of these dots, either magnetize them to be up, uh, we can point up or point down uh, into uh, reference to the disk surface. Uh, that, that is how the, how the out information is recorded physically. Now, what, what the, basically the challenge we, we are facing right now is, as we're making this bit smaller and smaller, one of the most uh, kind of a difficult physical challenge coming in, which is the temperature. And you can see is a sum anything we call the sum when, once you deal with the thermal uh, agitation and, and it, 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 it tended to randomize what you said. So this data has to withstand so-called the thermal uh, uh, thermal disturbance and not only just uh, stay there uh, withstand the uh, thermal disturbance for a couple hours or, or a couple months, it need to last several years, 10 years, and even longer because we need to keep this information uh, for when people need it. So in order to make sure these things are stable, this is what we, we need to make these magnetic materials, we call it uh, um, more difficult to, to be switched up and down randomly. Right? So we need to create an uh, so energy barrier higher. Now, 
we do have this kind of material. Uh, we can put, we can generate this kind of material with a very, very high energy barrier. We, the magnet will be up or down, and they will stay there. Uh, that solves the problem of the thermal stability, but it creates another problem, which is how do you write this kind of what we call the hard media, right? How do you write? Because you your pencil probably is not strong enough to write. Uh, called head. Uh, the the field coming from head is not strong enough to to kind of reverse this kind of media. So this is what this uh, energy assist concept coming in. So it's almost like do one concept is during the writing we actually heat the media a uh, little higher so that the uh, the magnetic uh, barrier, uh, energy barrier will be reduced. And then we write the uh, media, we set the direction, then the, the heat removed, and then the uh, the magnetic property restored, and then positivity is so strong that the, the signal, the information will stay on the media um, very, very, uh, very, for a very, very long time. Even that dot is very, very small. So there's a whole technology based on this kind of a logic uh, uh, kind of sequence is what the, uh, the whole industry is working on. And we have to make this energy assist recording happen and so that we can continue push our aerial density uh, forward. So this is a very exciting uh, phase right now we are in. Uh, we know our uh, competitor or our friend uh, CEG are working on that. We are also working on this, and we have a university and doing lots of uh, work. Uh, you know, we, we have a partnership with uh, CMU. Um, all we as an industry, we have a clear focus. We want to have that innovation uh, into our product. Now. As we look at the long term, when we look at the, uh, the, the zeta by uh, era, we really see is as we go forward, the data creation is introducing so much new uh, uh, varieties. Uh, each cell phone now generating lots of data. When we have an autonomous vehicle, they will generate tens of data also. So the way data being generated will be will be very, very different at every aspect. Then we, we also look at this uh, data utilization mod, uh, method is also changed dramatically. Uh, it's not just people went to cloud and uh, share pictures, everything. AI is really try to use tons of the data, try to create, learn new things and, uh, and try to uh, generate Lots of valuable, valuable uh, 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 decisions and the strategy uh, in our life. Then go to the last step is the data. After this whole cycle, eventually all the data will end. To I call it the data will go to a retirement mode. Uh, it's where the data need to be uh, preserved. Um, this pres data preservation hasn't really captured people's attention yet. Uh, part of the reason is uh, our, our so-called the uh, zeta by uh, zeta by era just started. Uh, I did a quick check. The history of Facebook is probably less than 20 years. Right? Uh, the Google Cloud is probably less than 20 years. And the one thing we notice is uh, anything people loaded the data on Facebook, probably they will never erase. Uh, because part of the reason is this is people's life. Right? This is, in the end, every bit, once they create it and be able to uh, sort on somewhere, there is no human habit to erase data. So in the end, we will see a tremendous innovation required for data preservation. And this is kind of a next wave as we look how the data um, life cycle will create a new dimension of uh, uh, innovation. So um, not only magnetic recording technology 
try to innovate to address the data preservation, we see is uh, there's uh, multiple new ideas also try to uh, try to participate, get into the game. Uh, very, very exciting uh, new, uh, uh, currently very actively, uh, work, people are very actively working on like a DNA storage. Right? People talk about preservation, nothing can beat this DNA as a very intuitively DNA can preserve very long and this is this and also it has a high density and and all the things we look at the one zettabyte they said is they can just put the one zettabyte into a kind of a one glass of wine bottle or something so this is a very very exciting that kind of technology if people be able to uh, uh, make it working there's also a technology like use the glass silicon uh, to uh, uh, to use laser uh, model to to record in a 3D something uh, Microsoft is uh, uh, working on. Uh, once you have that, and this can last one more than 100 years uh, because it's a, such a stable uh, physical structure. So, so all this innovation is a uh, very exciting right now. Uh, I uh, the the. the when I see this one, it reminds one thing is that um, in, the way, in order to predict the future, you have to uh, invent it uh, ourselves. And this is exactly uh, what uh, is happening right now. Uh, so I'd like to share this chart. This is the first time uh, semiconductor research uh, consortium uh, developed a, a a storage chart. They usually have, you know, semi, uh, semi, uh, calcul uh, the uh, calculation related uh, different kind of uh, 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 industry chart is how semiconductor support. But this is the first time they develop uh, a long term data storage chart uh, to cover the, uh, uh, the, the, the future. This is the first uh, uh, revision. As you can see, um, data storage is a is a wide spectrum of um, a basically a wide spectrum of need, and also has a wide spectrum of uh, uh, ideas to cover it. So on the top is really in the uh, the, the DNA is really uh, highlighted some of uh, the bigger promise. We also, as I mentioned, the optical. Uh, recording, uh, uh, which is basically the, the some of the things Microsoft is, uh, illustrated, right? And uh, the the green area and the purple area is uh, a more traditional magnetic recording. Uh, this is the currently the most exciting. Uh, Ninety percent of the data is now currently in green and the orange. Uh, then you have this uh, SSD word uh, at the front, but have to remember that the data is getting older and older each day, each bit create uh, when they start. So when whatever the orange uh, data will eventually goes to the green uh, green zone, the green zone data will eventually go to blue zone. Right? So this is a very interesting dynamics as we look at the future. Uh, so all I can say is uh, when I see this chart coming from SRC, it, it just really, uh, uh, I feel so excited because uh, um, this is more than what we can do as just uh, one company and even as uh, one kind of uh, our own career to finish this kind of uh, uh, spectrum of innovation. And this is really uh, will create a, a, a new set of uh, uh, talent, a new set of new probably companies to cover all these uh, uh, innovations in the future. Okay, so I'd like to end here. And uh, as I, as I uh, uh, mentioned at the beginning, uh, I hope uh, with this uh, kind of dialogue, I bring some of the awareness uh, of our data storage and uh, also create uh, some interest from the audience and last but not the least, also I hope uh, that interest to create some uh, maybe new ideas. You can be part of the uh, um, 
uh, innovation for our future data storage uh, for the data byte era. Thank you very much. I was a refugee and I was an immigrant to United States in the late 80s after the fall of South Vietnam. I came to this country with no money, hardly speaking English, but I have a dream and I have freedom. When I was in my high school, one of the things that attracted me most is a tiny little box personal computer. I can play some game, ping pong and tic-tac-toe. I venture out and try to find the program that create those games. That's where I lead myself into a firmware engineer career. Hi, my name is Hong Wu. I'm a technologist I'm working for Western Digital for more than 30 years. At that time, the team is known and they work on a first known HDD, that hard drive is 20 megabytes. Skipping forward to today, Western Digital just sit a 20 terabyte hard drive. We multiply the capacity by 1 million times. My role at Western Digital is performance and power. To optimize the drive to get the best performance and power in the industry, you can increase the performance of the drive 100% single line code chains. For every hardware person, our company probably need four or five firmware person to explore all the possibility that being created by the hardware. I love my co-worker. I love the environment where everyone allowed to learn, allowed to explore, allowed to ask, and allowed to excel. You never know due to your own background, your own point of view, your own struggle with life, you can help the team to open a different technology, a different discovery, different way to see and solve the problem. That's what we needed. Uh, this is a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Chen. Uh, I believe we have already have a lot of questions in line for you already. Uh, so I hope you are ready. I'm sorry, I will still need to take some of your time after your very um, amazing talk. Okay. So let's start from uh, just a little bit technical questions. Um, some of the audience asking that could you explain what is uh, SMR, which gives 20% more storage capacity at this high level? What's the SMR, the, what's the physics high level, why it can increase 20% of capacity? Sure, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Watson, the, the, uh, the SMR stands for single magnetic recording. Um, the, uh, the, the concept is kind of a, uh, interest, uh, it's kind of interesting. So, so hard drive basically is really about how do we utilize the whole disk surface uh, efficiently so basically once you have a, a disk it's a it's a circle disk and then in the middle it has a hole and the, then the, the, you put the disk uh, the, the, the reason the middle have a hole is that because it has a motor it it it, it hold the disk then it can spin right yeah. so 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 basically you have this uh, surface is all your all your kind of uh, um, uh, asset to put on the data. Yeah. So you can see, you can imagine is what the basically traditional hard drive is putting, uh, firstly, when you have the surface, they put the, they call it the data track. So data track is a circle. So you basically have a lot of circles kind of uh, 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 from OD with the, I, uh, the, the edge of the, uh, the disk and uh, and and uh, put all these circles into into the uh, the center of the uh, the motor so you basically occupy the whole space 
Then each data track, you put all these uh, data data information there. Now, in order to put more information, you have two ways. The first is to put the bit to bit closer on when on the data track, right? You you ask each one to squeeze a little bit close, and then you get the uh, information into this data track. Uh, uh, more uh, more data, more bits on the data track. Yeah. The other way you do is really make each track uh, getting closer, getting closer. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, conventional data, you, you you have a rule so called you need to do a random access. So every data track is uh, such is independent. You you have one data track you can update, write, and read. And uh, and it's supposed to be independent from the uh, the adjacent track. So SMR is Shingo means uh, we actually stacking data track one on top of each other. So you you definitely will add more. You you basically you kind of uh, you squeeze the uh, all the all the data track together. Um, so you get more uh, um, data track on the surface. But also you create a one is when you have a one data track and then you write a new data track almost overlapping the older one. What you will create is the older data track cannot be updated unless both data track updated together because otherwise you actually have this have the uh, uh, have the data integrity issue. Uh, so you gain twenty percent, but also you what you lose is. Uh, you 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 sacrifice some kind of random uh, write uh, capability. Um, before SMR is not uh, able to uh, utilize in an efficient way, because if you most of the hard drive before is used on PC or other kind of a device, almost need random access capability. But um, in the uh, in the future data, as why as we highlight, lots of data actually is a sequential data, right? The 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 video data, autonomous vehicle data, all these data actually are sequential. So basically, it create a kind of perfect condition for us to use SMR, so that it, since it's a sequential, so I know I put this data in a in a sequential way. Uh, so, so the future machine data and all these big data actually is perfectly making our SMR uh, a very good solution for that. And this is why, uh, as we look the, uh, we really need to know the property of the data when we develop the future hard drive to fully utilize the tricks we can do in the hard drive to, uh, to gain to to provide the best value to our customers. Yes. So since that for the uh, sequential data storage, SMR seems is a fantastic technology to consider, right? Yes. 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 And also the second question is that uh, you mentioned about energy assistant storage. Um, so the question was how precise you need to control the temperature. What's the range of the temperature? Yeah, actually this goes to some of the uh, I, I probably uh, can say is that the temperature uh, uh, range is really well controlled. Uh, what we have actually the device uh, uh, for energy is each device uh, basically the energy is is created uh, uh, by a laser uh, uh, module, and that laser module being the uh, uh, the energy to the disk. Uh, but this energy can be tuned by the voltage uh, we supplied to the laser. Uh, so we, when we do the power uh, control, we actually uh, doing in a way we optimize when the when the when the head is on top of the media. We actually tune the different power so that we know exactly what the condition is the best for the for the recording data uh, uh, quality and the uh, data area density. So highest data density and also highest data quality uh, will be it will be the kind of uh, uh, criteria for us to set where the temperature is. 
Yeah. Yeah. Specifically, water temperature is a little bit tricky because really depends on the water material for hammer is what the magnetic material you will use. A different the magnetic material, uh, the, the, the specific temperature on the disk will be uh, different. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a very uh, cost, costly process, right? Each <laughs> requires laser to change the temperature. Wow. <laughs> and the hard drive is not that expensive, right? <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, and I will, I will switch the gear a little bit to a different topic related to the hard drive technology. Um, uh, there, there's a question talking about the healthcare industry. So you mentioned about that um, in the future or even now we have social media where generate lots of data, right? Uh, and also, you know, we're talking about the AI uh, technology. And then for AI technologies involve lots of data training, right, for the model. Then after you train the model, you use the model to inference, uh, predict the future, uh, the behavior. Okay. However, for the healthcare industry, it's a little bit tricky because, in, especially I think the United States hospital, which store patients' data is almost usually confidential. Meaning each hospital doesn't allow to share the data outside the hospital. So that means if you want to use AI model to get more data as a trend, it's difficult. So I'm talking about this related with business a little bit that is, do you think that this is about like private cloud versus business cloud? When I say business cloud mean like, for example, we are talking about uh, the Google, right? Amazon, they have, um, for example, Amazon have an AWS, right? It's kind of like shared cloud space where you can uh, always have a uh, data you can train online. However, for hospitals, they will hesitate to use this service. And I think in the future for some other industry or even for some private company, they don't want their data uh, share or even store in the outside companies, the storage room. You can imagine there will be lots, lots more the private cloud market growing. Okay, so let's come to two questions. First question is, what do you think about this um, healthcare industry? Do you think it's gonna this kind of this non data sharing thing gonna in, impact uh, this um, uh, storage uh, business? I see. So yeah, uh, also this is a. This is really uh, address, uh, kind of you touch the core of a uh, uh, future future data storage. Uh, um, since I'm working on the more like a hardware kind of layer, uh, lots of things as you look is really uh, 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 not only it's a software layer. It's also it's like a, almost like it's a it's a policy, uh, and also how do you define you know what kind of a privacy uh, are, are needed. Um, it goes back to see, I see major trend is um, we have to look at the data, you uh, probably use a new term called digital uh, asset. Um, so you can, you, because for instance, like the uh, Chia, Chia, is, uh, the, the cryptocurrency is for sure is a digital asset. And, uh, and the currently, if we have a metaverse, if someone create some uh, property on the, on, the, on the metaverse, and, and then these are the data, their asset, right? Um, the, I think the, the medical uh, data, as you mentioned, uh, is, is, is really an asset also. It's a, it's a digital asset. It's probably is very important for the patient. It's also very important for the, for the, for the hospital or for the doctor. Um, so as we talk about this, this trend is, uh, it, it, it really uh, uh, open for lots of questions is eventually um, what is the norm of privacy uh, is about, right? Uh, I, I maybe make it more generic. Um, uh, many years ago, I read a book by uh, Eric Schmidt. Also, he talked about cl uh, cloud. So at, at the beginning, people think uh, cloud internet is really a worldwide thing, right? WWW. 
Um, but now you see actually cloud become uh, uh, internet become a uh, you know uh, more more re regional uh, kind of uh, um, uh, kind of coverage. Uh, you go to China, you probably cannot you know cover everything. So everyone start to think the worldwide internet has become a such you know national security infrastructure and then make it a very very unique become a kind of a regionalized yeah. uh, and also the, the once you become a regionalized then your policy your 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 kind of a, how to say regulation regulation limitation guideline what is you know what 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 do you control what do you not control become totally uh, different zone, uh, region by region. I think the storage will, will, will go through the same trans, uh, change. Uh, as we start to realize the digital asset value is so fundamental to our life, uh, to, 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 to business, uh, then there will be a very, very uh, uh, sophisticated kind of uh, policy or, or business uh, strategy to start to develop these uh, different solution. Now, um, in general, I feel is for, for data storage, we basically make hardware. A uh, couple of things we, we definitely see uh, that uh, what, what would drive um, our hardware uh, innovation. The first is, uh, I think no matter what, people will be more uh, cautious on the security. So basically it says if your hard drive, um, somehow people start to not use it. If they start to throw away and somehow someone hack it and, uh, and the, all the data could be, could be missing. So some, some kind of, uh, I would say the, uh, how do you protect that kind of uh, uh, data, data privacy is something for, in the, you have to really looking not only just when we when this hard drive is in the system, it has a privacy. We have to also look is even the hard drive is thrown out somewhere else, and some there is a way of keeping it from uh, tapped by other people, right? Uh, I heard a very interesting news. May, uh, my memory may be fake uh, 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 already. It, there's a one Japan Japan news a uh, um, couple months ago. I saw is that there is a there is a city uh, a council. They they, they 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 kind of uh, throw out some of the uh, old server, right? They say, okay, just recite throw out the old server. Then um, some someone some hack bought them, and then found out there's lots of uh, tax information going on that the city, and somehow they got the uh, information in that. Um, so as we look at holistically right now is. Uh, the privacy, the protection of privacy is really, really important. So that's assume uh, this, this is just a normal way of doing it. Uh, the other is uh, to against some physical attack, like a malware attack and some other, uh, what kind of a defense mechanism we can do to, to against that. And and this is definitely first line of defense is system level solution, but anything from system they come up with some uh, encryption requirement or some of technology uh, we can support. We have to work with them closely to to build that capability. Yeah, and then going back to your uh, the hospital uh, uh, kind of uh, hospital case. For sure, I see is a hospital, bank, every aspect, right? You see this, this will, the, as the data become a more and more important asset. And, and uh, we, we, need to, we need to really have this, uh, the right technology, right the security solution for, for all of this. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, you have to emphasize this, uh, have the piece of security is very important. And now we try to imagine from a business point of view, making money wise. Yeah. In the future, more and more uh, organizations, a company, or even individuals care about their security of the data, right? So maybe our storage company will encourage people to have their own mini data center to so their own company, their own house, even their own 
uh, individual, even for backup, right? Do you think they're going to boost the storage company business very much in the future? That's a that's a billion dollar question, Wilson. If I know the answer, I uh, uh, I definitely working on something already. Um, I definitely I see is the 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 cycle of used to be you know every all the things is, used to be uh, we, when I come to the United States, I remember there is like a workstation, it's a terminal, then everything is uh, is a centralized in the in the server room, right? So you have so in to a certain extent, this is a centralized model. Uh, then once the PC started, everything become a like edge type of uh, solution. Everyone has their own uh, workstation, and all these things are there. Uh, it become so from from uh, from these uh, from the uh, centralized to to distributed. Uh, now definitely you see it's a more uh, going back to the uh, cloud model. Is everything goes to centralized again. Uh, if the efficiency of the cloud is is really, you cannot compete, right? The, the, the tremendous amount of uh, uh, leverage to uh, to make it a very efficient. Uh, what I heard the other day, you know, Google, when they put uh, an AI uh, algorithm to control the cooling of the data center and be able to save lots of energy and that kind of uh, scale and capability in you know, only the big uh, data center be able to achieve. So the efficiency is driving centralized uh, centralized uh, uh, solution. Uh, but on the other hand, the uh, uh, then, then the uh, the private uh, the the security, the private uh, privacy, and uh, in the future, I think uh, is the also there is at a certain point I see is another dimension is who owns the data. Um, the, for instance, like autonomous vehicle, if this is really happened, this is a new field to, to me for sure. But the interesting to say is, is the data owned, the, so if you, you are Tesla or Toyota, is the data owned by Toyota or owned by the driver or owned by the uh, in, internet company? So, so, so the, these things will may end up to come up with a different way of a storage uh, uh, kind of solution too. Um, it will be exciting to see. Yeah, I, I don't have a good back one way or the other, Wilson. Um, but right. I, I think your question is very valid. I mean, to 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 certain extent, I think a lot of lots of startup is really uh, ha, uh, is based on certain model they believe and they try to uh, come up with their solution. Yeah, yeah. I would like to just follow up your question a little bit about driving questions regarding the data, right? You, you were just talking about it. The, the driving data belongs to, for example, the car company, uh, Tesla, Twitter, or the internet cloud service. But my question is, this should be belong to individual, right? For example, I purchase car, I use my driving uh, data stored in my own car, has my own car learning the way I drive. So this data I use to have my AI to train to be my personal driving model should belong to me, right? So that means each car should be a moving data center. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an amazing thing if you think stretch your imagination, right? I mean, to a certain extent, if you look at Facebook, uh, the whole contract of the user of Facebook is not very clear. The thing I can uh, create. Is my or uh, Facebook? I mean, currently everything you collect, you accept their uh, contract. You already agree whatever Facebook defines. Uh, but for instance, in the future, like your grandpa's Facebook uh, 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 page, eventually your grandpa passed away. You know what is the policy? Who owns the, that Facebook account? And, and what what if your grandpa is a famous person? Then it's become a you know Michael Jackson. For instance, Michael Jackson's. Uh, uh, account right. Some of the things I do believe is the data uh, become a digital asset is the fundamental uh, transformation. And uh, you know, I I, I view this uh, hard drive is more like we are we are the we we, we are building bank deposit room, right? <laughs> so, so imagine if each car is a moving data center, you can imagine how uh, how big the the business potential for hard drive. Can you think, imagine that each 
hard to find a huge amount of hard drive. <laughs> so, so currently the problem is hard drive cannot be on the car, right? It's, a, it's a shaking everything. That's why SSD is really good. They they are the first kind of a buffer. Then it you basically says if these cars uh, put all their driving behave or all these uh, road condition experience, there has to be there is certain layer of information they want to uh, uh, upload it on a certain place. And then the uh, hard drive and SMR especially uh, will be super, super uh, efficient, uh, effective. I see, got it. So uh, regarding the SMR, you talk about that's pretty much as an additional technology to support when the more slow couldn't help hope anymore, right? So imagine even SMR reached the limit. So I'm talking about if the physics uh, reached the limit. What yeah. is the storage technology business? I'm talking about business. Straight away. Yeah. Next step, you can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, well, so this is, uh, first of all, the, that's why the energy assist is another kind of a, a new S curve to drive the, uh, uh, more, the, the kind of a Crider's law or Moore's law for the, the area density growth. Uh, uh, e, uh, but on the other hand, as uh, as we looked, is the tiering of the data is extremely important as the data grow. You want the uh, the similar data to be tiered, and then you want to design your device uh, maximize the cost for the storage. Tiering means how often you write read the data right from SS the data on the SSD. That means the data need to be write read very frequently, and you put this data on the quite expensive media. And then once the data getting cooler or getting uh, cold, uh, no, uh, less people to uh, uh, to access that data, then you immediately move to the next media, which could be uh, uh, HDD. Um, and then it's even cooler that you move to uh, SMR, then even cooler you move to uh, even uh, further more efficient uh, storage tier. So um, the whole economy of this tiering start to be uh, more uh, attractive when the data size grow, right? Because each uh -huh. tiering itself uh, has a, its own economy and you can build a special device to cover that tier. Yeah, well, that's, that's why you even talk about a tier of the data, well, so that's a new idea I never thought about. Thank you so much. And you're talking about a cooling thing, right? Temperature thing. Yeah. So I believe you heard of uh, the uh, some of the company even put a storage um, in data center under the water, right? To cool it, cool it down. Yeah. Um, do you think it's going to be the trend in the future to do that? You can save the space as well, or you think that's just a just a fancy marketing thing? Do you think that's oh. going to be the trend? Well, I think the uh, I, I think last time I read Microsoft they did uh, some uh, uh, very very nice experiment. They actually put a one container has uh, 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 lots of hard drive. Actually, they use uh, WD's helium drive, um, helium seal. So each drive actually seal and put in the under the water on that. Um, yeah, definitely. The, these solutions really, if you talk about why this solution could be attractive. Uh, you have to look at most of the city actually by the ocean, right? That's mm -hmm. very important. And the other thing you need to look at is if the city by the ocean, you and that also means the land will be very expensive too. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the things, this is also not only about the cooling, it's all about what is the most effective way of connected to, close to where the users are, but also has the right kind of economy to support. I see. Wow, that's that's a definitely uh, thank you for this good idea. I never thought about that. But a most city next to the ocean, so it makes sense to put a data center inside the water, cool it down, it's close to the uh, population. So that that's great. And uh, the next question is that um, when you talk about uh, the hard drive, right? Also the you mentioned about flash drive. And you know, in the current uh, notebook or computer, we have a, a, a RAM, right? And RAM technology also improved, getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so my question to you is that, can you imagine one day when the RAM technology can move uh, close to hard drive? Well, what I'm trying to say is hard drive getting to the physical limit, right? So RAM is getting bigger and bigger. One day it 
can reach to similar size to hard drive, do you think RAM can replace hard drive? In, even in my computer, uh, like my notebook. <laughs> At home? Uh, I would, uh, I, yeah, I, I would say it's uh, it's a very uh, small chance. Uh, I I don't want to. Uh, um, I I assume the audience also has people working on RAM, but uh, uh, what I would uh, say is uh, I won't I won't try. Uh, I I won't think RAM will uh, bet will uh, will be uh, making lots of business sense to replace HDD. Uh, the economy is totally different. The other is. Uh, um, you know the storage is really about the the data can last can store very long, not not the uh, the right to read it very fast. So it's really a different kind of a ball game, right? right. So uh, HDD, yes, yes. And the for reason you think that not very easy to have room replace hard drive. Forget about economy. Forget about physics. Just physics. Do you think that's possible? Uh, RAM can reach. Uh, hard drive no, I, I don't think that that's possible. Yeah, hard drive uh, with this many uh, 50 or 60 years of uh, uh, innovation, it is really has this uh, kind of own uh, robot kind of a reason to, to survive. And uh, now, uh, as I said, 90% of the data in data center is on hard drive. Mm, yeah, great. Uh, uh, one final uh, uh, technology question, Sam. Uh, you mentioned about data uh, data bytes, right? So, and now the current hard drive we can have is the individual one, 20 terabytes now, the newest one. So I just say, imagine if the technology is, it, it's keep moving on. One day we can have a single hard drive, we can hold, uh, and I'm not saying a pen, somehow just single hard drive in the market just close to one data byte. Even if that can happen, I don't know if they can move it back there or not, but what's the reading technology? What I'm trying to say is, if the data is so big like one data byte, I definitely need a read, reading head to read, it, read the data I want to capture, right? So it's going to have wait for so long <laughs> just to retrieve one data for me, right? It's a data yes, byte. Yes, yes, yes. So, so do you think that's the reason why we may not have a single hard drive? With data by data, even if we can make it physically, even if technology no problem, but just the reading technology uh, physically cannot reach there. So I'm trying to ask: Is it possible to have a reading technology to read the data byte in just one hard drive we can hold our head? Um, it's 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 difficult. Uh, was and uh, if current hard drive data rate is about two hundred meg per second, right? So. Uh, uh, um, actually, current drive. When we try to read the whole drive, it takes a couple, uh, uh, more than a couple of days. It's uh, almost a week. You you really doing the whole scan of the data of the hard, big hard drive. Um, the 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 so called the uh, the I O uh, density is a one terabyte. How how many how many time you can write to read? It's a physical limit. Hard drive current, as you mentioned, is. Um, it's uh, one of the one of the thing hard drive has unique, uh, not unique, but it's kind of a fit, it's a mechanical device. It's always have some limitation, right? right. But the tailwind is following. As I as I as I see it, uh, just look at history of the data you generated in the history. Every time you put the picture, every day you generate more data. So the statistic of each data being read read by you actually reduced, right? right? So so basically, as you looking the, as the data grow, each data sector being read, the probability actually reduced, right? Mm -hmm. So so to a certain extent, as long as our hard drive size grow is matching the pace of this kind of uh, natural kind of uh, cooling down of uh, read frequency, uh, the, the the economy of a bigger hard drive is still very very attractive. So you mean that the, the reader they must stay in the area where we most read it, right? And just yeah, it's don't don't need to consider reach that far away because it's the data you don't know how far away or or you even have it, right? That's that's what I mean. Okay, that totally makes sense. Thank you, uh, so much. Uh, due to the time limit. I can just only allow one more question before I, I could uh, let you go. I know you're tired. <laughs> it's a long talk. Uh, just a very uh, 
final question is that um, our audience is very curious. You become a CTO, which is the business technology leader uh, from the pure research engineer, right? So the two question is, uh, what make you to be a CTO? What the motivation uh, to have you um, become a CTO yourself? Second thing is, what the final words you want to share with the community to try to inspire uh, the CIE community, like, like how everyone who is engineer have a chance to grow themselves to be a business uh, technology leader? Just two questions, yeah. The first uh, one. Uh, you are very good of uh, nudge, uh, nudge the, uh, the tough question into the end. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so first of all, well, so I'd like to thank CIE, uh, you, uh, also the volunteer team, uh, really setting this up. It's a, it's really a good experience for me. Uh, I am so happy to meet uh, all the other all the people here, and uh, I'm looking forward to meet more people in the future uh, at the CIE. Um, regarding uh, what makes me to be CTO, uh, it's really I think. To a certain extent, uh, as I showed on the previous one of the picture, I started my career. I really learned a lot from the, the best in this industry. Uh, to a certain extent, it's, uh, it's really uh, it's a it's a it's a privilege, and also I, I feel uh, very lucky. And um, and and one of the thing I I kind of remind myself is when I see them actually on that picture, I'm the only one now working on HDD. Most of them retired already. Uh, so it is a more about responsibility. Uh, it is um, about how do I make sure this industry can move forward. And uh, so I'm not the, the the one can just. I need to make sure I lead the uh, the the future uh, uh, technical uh, uh, talents to move forward. So uh, you know, it's not about the title is not about me. The title is all about. How do I help other people to to grow and to be successful? Um, I talk about the final words. Uh, I I I really see it is uh, you know the uh, this this is a good community help us learn. Uh, I I would say one of the thing we we start when we leave school is we, where we the, the learning just real uh, really happen. Uh, I think the, pre the school is really uh, uh, remembers things and then learn what to how to learn. But when you start to work, this is where the real learning starts. So uh, set of the mindset is uh, you know uh, always be be uh, curious and uh, and, and find the, it, it like uh, Confucius said right. Uh, always yeah. looking for some uh, spark from other people. You always can learn something from other people. Like I always learn a lot of things from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's an amazing, amazing talk that I really want to let you go, but uh, the time is really li limited. Uh, we can I just start enjoying a lot of great information you share, right? Uh, before we are uh, in this uh, event, actually, there is uh, some uh, promotion we want to share with um, the community that. Uh, later on, um, you will see uh, we'll have some QR code. If you are interested in joining our community to be a volunteer, uh, we will share the, the QR code later. And also, don't forget that we have an annual conference on um, May 14th at uh, Santa Clara Center. That's a face-to-face -face, uh, conference where we offer lots of bread talk in the afternoon, also the banquet in the evening. We really sincerely invite everyone who's interested in the CIE's events, uh, your activities, the communities, what we are doing, please come to join us at afternoon session. Also, if you really want to help us to grow the community together, being a volunteer, we also offer the volunteer only, invited only event, which is going to be in May 27th, which you can, you're going to see, uh, we have a promotion slide later. So, the last, I want to say thank you, uh, Dr. Jin. Thank you so much for your time and thanks everybody to come here today. So I would like to just uh, close this session right now. And uh, before uh, you, everybody's leave, please uh, have a chance uh, to scan this QR code uh, coming.
soon, and it's going to be a promotion slide afterwards. If you want to understand a little bit more about this um, this event, the coming event, please send a little bit later. Uh, you will see uh, the sharing. Thank you very much.